Bahrain, the case of Mohamed Ramadan. We open with the list of speakers which are also, who are also authors. First speaker is Mr. Smith, two minutes. President, uh, thank you. There's been a genuinely good cooperation across the House in the production of this really very solid resolution. And uh, bluntly, I'd hope so. If, if we can't unite on something like an opposition to the death penalty, I, I, I don't think there's much hope for us. There are those in Bahrain who do feel that we focus too much upon the kingdom. We, we criticize too much the lack of progress in Bahrain that we've seen in parts. And uh, there's other abuses in the region. Why not focus upon them? And, uh, Firstly, we do focus on other abuses in the neighbouring countries, in the wider region. And secondly, in many ways it is a compliment because there is a feeling within this House that there is scope for a dialogue with Bahrain that's actually going somewhere. There is actually a progress, a process towards reform that we can assist and there is useful discussions to be had. And it is important that we recognise the progress that Bahrain has made in a reform programme. That Institutional reform, we've seen steps towards an independent judiciary, we've seen the establishment of ombudsmen, we've seen the establishment of the Prisoners' Rights Commission, a special investigations unit. There has been a number of declarations which have been really very positive. But that progress has stalled and we need to see that progress continue and we can assist in that process by being vocal in our criticism but also constructive in our willingness to help. And we must be vocal about our criticism of the sentencing of Mr. Ramadan to death, along with nine other individuals presently on death row within the kingdom. And I hope we will be unanimous in our condemnation of those sentences. I'd also, in a very solid resolution, pick out particularly paragraph three, stresses the obligation to ensure that human rights defenders are protected and allowed to conduct their work without hindrance, intimidation or harassment. Internal dialogue within Bahrain is vital for underpinning progress. We can assist with that process and I hope we'll unite around this resolution today. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Corral, one minute. Thank you, President. It, we can't deny the member state's failure on the Bahrain issue. What's actually been done and what will be the future steps forward to do something about these um, uh, political prisoners who are subject to torture? We've seen a uh, uh, the procurement between states where there are friendships uh, and we continue with these excellent relationships. However, we have not been able to protect the rights of human rights activists. Today sheds a light on the abuses that continue in the country, such as limiting freedom of expression and uh, not allowing the freedom to protest. The case of um, Ali Musa and Mohammed Ramadan have been imprisoned and tortured just for having exercised their rights. Are, uh, a uh, flagrant violation of this. Uh, member states have to work in depth on a strategy on, with um, Bahrain to put economic and diplomatic pressure on the country to try to ensure that they will release uh, people who've been illegitimately imprisoned. So, Mr. Panzeri, one minute. Grazie. Thank you, President. There has been a dramatic series of clashes in the Gulf region involving Iran, Saudi Arabia, the regional powers seeking to uh, impose hegemony over Bahrain. There have been many um, violations of uh, human rights and Mohammed uh, Ramadan is only one, uh, only the latest in a long list. And the other Another case that we have uh, is Nivel Araji Rabat, another human rights defender. And these are people who um, face incarceration, they face prison and worse. Uh, they face torture also on the part of the police forces. And the logic here um, is one which bears down on civil society, bears down on media freedoms as well. We express, express our concerns and call on the Bahraini authorities um, to uh, put their house in order. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Zdowski, one minute. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I'd like to say that this resolution is a huge compromise. It is a compromise from all parties. The EPP uh, is finally supporting this compromise, but uh, I do need to stress that we 
had many reservations to this text and we weren't really united about the text formulation. The text of the resolution shows one more thing. It shows us how important it is to verify and re-verify information because there were several groups here who tried to put information into the resolution that turned out to be false. And it was impossible to verify that information from neutral sources. Now, I think we need to uh, use this resolution to appeal on the Bahraini government to reinvestigate Mohammed Ramadan's case and all the other cases where uh, which are suspect of human rights infringements. I would like to comment Bahrain's progress, for instance, in the area of the death penalty. Thank you. Mr. Tanak, one minute. There are clearly legitimate concerns surrounding the arrest and trial of Mohammed Ramadan and my group calls on the Bahraini authorities and his majesty in particular to carry out a full investigation into the allegations of torture, suspending any convictions and particularly uh, the death penalty until this process has taken place and reviewing the sentences where appropriate following the conclusions that have been made. But nevertheless, the proposed, the proposed joint text today, in our view, is far too strong in its general condemnation of this fragile island state, making huge efforts to improve its governance and human rights situation for us to support it and to sign it. And it fails to recognise the security risks that Bahrain faces, including external interference by neighbouring Iran. My country, the United Kingdom, has a tradition of strong ties with the Kingdom of Bahrain, dating right back to the foundation of the modern state, when it was uh, its initial protector, to today, when construction is commencing on a Royal Navy base, uh, as agreed between the United Kingdom and Bahrain in 2014, which serves to remind us of the close security ties we have and the important role that Bahrain and its tolerant multi-confessional state plays in the region's security. Thank you. Madame Vergia, one minute. Merci. Thank you. In the Arab Spring 2011, uh, almost half of the population of Bahrain came into the streets. Most of them were Shiite and were oppressed uh, under the system, and they were claiming for democracy and social rights. They uh, didn't uh, achieve it. Um, other countries came in and the forces of order oppressed them. Uh, there are thousands of political prisoners. This country is in the second place in terms of the number of people imprisoned in Arab countries. Uh, they have restricted rights and the fight against uh, terrorism is being used as a, a weapon against them. Uh, this We claim uh, that the death penalty uh, should be abolished, but the um, a question of nationality is also being used as an instrument against the people. The Bahraini authorities are um, not willing to uh, reform uh, nor to uh, implement the 25 recommendations of the Independent Commission of Inquiry uh, and they continue to practice torture and uh, judge people on the um, confessions obtained through torture. This is not the way to progress into the future. Uh, Bahrain has to progress in the right direction. One minute. Thank you, President, Commissioner, colleagues. This week, many of you, just like I did, heard from the authorities in Bahrain. They would like to focus on energy, security, and other issues of mutual concern. And I, too, would prefer not to have to ask the Bahraini authorities again to stop torture, to stop repressing minority opinions, to stop revoking people's citizenships, and now, the worst of all punishment, to stop the death penalty. Mohammed Ramadan, is one of 10 people on death row in Bahrain, but he is the first to have exhausted all legal appeals mechanisms. We urgently call on the Bahraini authorities to reinstall moratorium on the death penalty. And more broadly, the best, and in fact the only way to develop fruitful and deep cooperation between Bahrain and the European Union is for them to unequivocally respect the rights of all people in Bahrain to allow the special representative of the UN access to the country and full access to detainees and facilities and to make sure that, that it respects the rights of people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, Madam Manescu, one minute. So
Thank you, Madam President. I am definitely against the death penalty and the use of torture. And there is no justification for, for, for torture and the death penalty by any government. And I hope that the Bahraini government reconsider these measures. I do believe that they can do that because they have shown us that they can be involved and that they can set on the right path. However, I believe that these resolutions, no matter how many resolutions we adopt in the European Parliament against small uh, states in the Persian Gulf, when we show double sta standards in our relationship with uh, third countries, we will fail as human rights defenders. An Amnesty uh, uh, International report shows that Iran is um, one of the uh, countries that uses the death penalty the most. Two and three or three death uh, um, penalties are carried daily. So, Madam President, we, we need to not uh, turn a blind eye selectively against human rights abuses. Only then will we be able to help people where they need us, also in Iran. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Gomes. One minute. Five years after the first protest for democracy in Bahrain, we continue to receive reports of intense political oppression, arbitrary trials, torture, violence against demonstrators and political opponents, uh, violations of human rights such as uh, trials against human rights activists. Uh, an activist was condemned for uh, six months in prison last month for a tweet. Uh, there's a continued effort to silence uh, manifestors and demonstrators in favour of human rights. This is common practice in countries such as this, uh, practising um, laws which allow the death penalty to be applied to people such as Mohammed Ramadan, who was tortured uh, allegedly. As well, we uh, call for a moratorium on the death penalty to be introduced as a first step towards it being abolished and we'd also call for a genuine pardon uh, for Mohammed Ramadan. We hope that the member states and the high representatives uh, make their voice heard on this matter. It's absolutely urgent for the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture visit uh, Bahrain and to get unrestricted access to all detention facilities and uh, places. Uh, we show our solidarity with all of the activists active in Bahrain that are imprisoned unjustly. Uh, Ibrahim Sharif, Abdullah Yarif, Mohammed al burawi and Sheikh Amir as salman as well. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, one minute. Thank you, President. I'm very pleased to be able to take the floor on this topic. And just like other members, I would like to say that a lot of progress has been made by Bahrain and they're working well with us in the European Union when it comes to trade and in many other areas. But this doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at the problems in Bahrain and particularly where things are going in the wrong direction when it comes to the death penalty and other things. So this is going against the international conventions and so we must put pressure on them to put an end to the death penalty, particularly in the case of Mohammed Ramadan and the way they reached the decision of a death penalty is in case. It is a very unfair and he is a victim. We feel that a working group should be established between the European Union and Bahrain so that we can speak about this and continue to make progress. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Next speaker, Madam Ward. One minute. I would like to express my heartfelt solidarity with Mohammed Ramadan and with his family and loved ones. It is the responsibility of all conscientious citizens in this world to stand up against arbitrary arrest, brutal torture and the death penalty, no matter where they take place. I also wish to use this opportunity to speak about the unfounded arrest and ill-treatment of children in Bahrain. 237 cases of children detained by Bahraini authorities were reported in 2015 alone. Many are subject to ill treatment and beatings, made to confess to crimes they did not commit. The cases most recently reported are those of Saeed Ali Abbas Mohammed, the brothers Yassem and Hassan Mohammed Hassan, Fadel Mohammed Hassan, Saeed Fahel, Saeed Shams, and Saeed Mohammed Hashem. 
all teenagers that have been arrested in recent months who must be returned safe and sound to their families. In 2013, this parliament issued a resolution calling on Bahrain to apply the Convention on the Rights of the Child to which it is a party. I would like to reissue that call here. The Bahraini authorities must release Mohammed Ramadan and all child prisoners. Thank you. For the CATCH-DI procedure, again, just two minutes, two speakers. First one, Mr. Svoboda. President, currently, many countries, in many countries, there is a discussion how to achieve a certain balance between security and freedom. Bahrain is on the right path, that's true, but we shouldn't turn a blind eye to, say, to cases such as Muhammad Ramadan and other people on death row. There could be only pardon by the head of the state that could help this person not to be executed. That's why I would like Bahrain to reintroduce the moratorium on the death penalty. I really call upon the authorities to continue in reforms of justice and police authorities in line with human rights. Thank you. And Mr. Caputo. Thank you, President. Concern about Bahrain's uh, regression towards the, the death penalty. Um, we're seeing uh, uh, people that have been subjected to torture during their detention and interrogations. And it's frightening that these are practices are used on a large scale, a scale and systematically um, without reform. In November 2014, the um, Bahrain court um, condemned Mr. Ramadan and Uzayin Ali Musa to death as well. Both people have claimed that they were subject to torture by the authorities in order to confess the crime. Uh, economic and diplomatic pressure on Bahrain should uh, encourage them to put an end to this practice, to abolish the death penalty, and we should denounce uh, torture of everyone who has been uh, condemned to the death penalty. Um, and we should condemn uh, the torture of all of these people. Thank you. Now, Commissioner Kretzel. Mr. Matthias, yes. Madam President, uh, honourable members, let me first stress uh, that uh, since the events of 2011, the EU has been closely monitoring the situation in Bahrain. The EU has been consistently engaging with local authorities at all levels, maintaining constant contacts with a wide range of Bahraini stakeholders and activists. Bahrain is an important partner in the Gulf region and has an important role to play in ensuring the stability of the Gulf region, which can best be achieved by strengthening the existing framework for the protection of human rights and individual freedoms. The EU will therefore continue to maintain an active dialogue with the country and its government and support Bahrain's stability and development. We consider that this objective can be best achieved through a process of inclusive national reconciliation, leading to gradual political and socio-economic reforms based on dialogue and tolerance. Like many in Europe, we have been concerned by the death penalty sentence imposed on Mr. Mohammed Ramadan and Mr. Hussein Ali Musa for their alleged involvement in a February 2014 bomb explosion which killed a police officer, a sentence upheld by the Bahraini Court of Cassation on 16 November 2015. The EU is uh, uh, unreserved, uh, un, unreservedly opposed to the use of capital punishment under all circumstances and its universal abolition will continue to remain a cornerstone of the EU's foreign policy. Allegations regarding their possible mistreatment in detention as well as the basis for their confessions should also be fully investigated. The EU, both in Brussels and through its delegation in Riyadh, accredited to Bahrain will continue to liaise with Bahraini authorities to advocate for the protection and promotion of human rights and fundamental freedom as per Bahrain's, Bahrain's international commitments. The recommendations set out by the Bahraini Independent 
Commission of Inquiry and the recommendations made during Bahrain's universal periodic review process. The EU will continue to call on the Bahraini government to act uh, proportionately in all cases to protect the rights of individuals indicted as a result of criminal charges, as was done during the second visit of EUSR for Human Rights Stavros Lambrinidis in May 2015. On this occasion, the EU conveyed again its preoccupation as to the imposition of the death penalty, recalling its principled opposition to this inhuman and degradating punishment. Mrs. President, Honorable Members, the EU, in close co coordination with the EU Member States represented in Manama, has been closely following developments related to these individual cases, as well as to the overall human rights situation in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The European Union has expressed fir fir firmly on many occasions that violence is not justified in any circumstances. The EU has also constantly called for transparent and due process and for the proper investigation of all alleged cases of ill treatment of torture. Bahraini human rights institutions should effectively tackle these matters in a transparent way. While the robust recommendations stemming from the national human rights institution should be implemented in the interest of all citizens. In this regard, the many steps taken by the Bahraini authorities to implement the recommendations of the Bahraini Independent Commission of Inquiry are positive and have the potential to improve the human rights situation in the country. But more is needed. The Ministry of Interior's Ombudsman the Prisoners and Det Detainees' Rights Commission and the National Institution for Human Rights have an important and proactive role to play by fulfilling their mandate in full independence and transparency. Let me once again assure you that we will continue to remain sized with the case of Mr. Mohamed Ramadan and Mr. Hussein Ali Musa and to voice the EU's concern through appropriate channels. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, colleagues, I have received seven motions for resolution to end up this debate. We vote today at 12.